Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Hoshii no Sora, Stars Align Episode 8. Last week on Hoshii, we had a couple of things happen. We finished up our practice match with those kids at that school who are definitely better than them. And, uh, well, we didn't really win any of the matches. We put up a pretty good fight in most of them and managed to take at least one game off of, I think, each one of the opposing teams. Which is pretty cool and definitely shows some growth on the front of, of our kids. Then we went and, and had a bit of a denouement and uh, had ourselves a little little cool picnic thing with a barbecue and making some food and happened to run into the redhead kid from the other school running by with his doggo and they came by, stopped in, and uh, gave some respect to Maki's cooking when he, he whipped up some tasty Okinawan fried noodles. Uh, then, in the meantime, a little bit of trouble is brewing back home at school. We got a little, little after shot thing of a couple of administrators looking over what seems to be a formal complaint lodged by one of the parents, unknown who, but I've got some guesses, um, saying that that it's a bad thing that their kid was off practicing in what should have been like a non-school day because they were off doing this practice match on a Sunday. Um, don't know who it was, but I have to think that after the the confrontation and threats lobbed at him by by Toma and Maki and the probable realization that his kid Maki not actually his kid actually his kid but you know what I mean he's not a fucking father uh realizing that he actually has something that he cares about where he's getting friends it seems straight up the alley of a vengeful petty asshole to try and take that away in whatever way he can and he's already talked to us before about his ability to use his status as his legal parent uh to find out where he is and probably lodge complaints at his uh at his school now, I don't know that that's the case. It could be one of the other parents, but of the parents that we've met so far, we don't really have anybody who would, like, make sense as someone who would, first off, go outside of their own home to approach the school, speaking of Toma's mom, um, and second, who would actually, like, be mean enough to be trying to do this. So the only other alternative is that, like, it's a parent that we haven't really met yet, and this is the way that we're going to meet them. Um... But that seems a lot less likely than it's just Maki's dad being a dickhead again. I'm also pretty worried going into, the, into this episode because we've had, like, at least one and a half, you could call it two full episodes of pretty good stuff going on. Like, team is getting together, they're becoming more more close as friends, they're... they're succeeding a little bit in their practicing and their practice matches, they're looking toward the future, things are going better... It's about time for something to go terribly wrong, and uh, that scares me because when this show does things going terribly wrong, it has hurt in the past, and so I am expecting that it might hurt again. Yay. In any case, we're just gonna we're just gonna go ahead, dive on in, and watch the episode and see what we see, find out what we find out, and we'll talk about it at the end. So I've got episode eight of Hoshii uh, blah 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 of Hoshii no Sora up and ready to go. It is at zero seconds. There will be two versions of this reaction video. You can find a picture in picture version with the video in the corner linked in the description, and a timer based version up on YouTube. If you want to sync up your own copy of the episode with the timer based version, you're welcome to do so. Just get your copy ready because the beep beep timer to count you down will be coming at you now. TBS Funimation No Itami Nuff This is intentional graininess, right? This isn't my video player being fucky. Oh, it was that guy? You did not? Um, fish. Huh? He's like 14. Okay, she's this parent. Yeah. Good. Oh. Oh. She's not wrong. But she's also so wrong. 
No, fuck off. Who cares about you? How to cope with Misaki. He's trying to drop a... Oh. It's a much less bad situation than some of the other situations, but it's still not a good situation, and it's a very real one. Okay, so it's not it's not Maki's dad. That's good. Or bad, because he's probably scheming something else that'll be worse. Fuck. And it's not it's not full on abuse, but it's tough to have a parent you don't see eye to eye with, especially one who Believes that they know best for you. But it is different now. So. Okay. You have to act. How? Yeah. They're growing. Little grasshoppers. Yeah. The witch. Oh, fuck. Monster parent. A helicopter parent. Cool. Cool. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Hata no ka. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And he's, he's, they said Hafu, so he's uh, half Japanese. That's actually probably going to be a plot point. I'm going to write that down. Hafu. And that's why he's got the darker skin. Hmm. 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 No. Oh. The empty house. What's that picture? Her as a dancer? Yep, that's the face of motivation right there. 
Yeah, that's that's a kid who is doing what they want to do. Fuck. That's three real. <laughs> Maybe four real. Hmm. Hmm. I'd agree with that, Mitsui. Yeah. How does he know all of this? And what was the thing that he was planning with his sisters? You could. Yeah. What you thinking about? What you, what you doing, Tsukinose? Just dark scribbles. Okay. It? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. That's what the seek. Okay. Okay. Tsukinose. Maki. <laughs> you have just been voluntold. Oh boy. Oh girl. All right, back in his place. Huh. This is going to be weird. This is not the first time he's dressed. Hey. It'll come together. You'll figure it out, bud. Oh. That. That guy is not a guy. Oh. Cool. Yeah, that, that character. More of a man than your real father. Hmm. You just gotta be Utena and, and fucking go with it, yo. Mm-hmm.
Yeah, I think everybody goes through existential crises occasionally. Hey! Empathy. Once Utah. Well, shit, that's not something that I expect. Okay. <laughs> and they might flashbacks to Mob Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> uh. Uh. Okay. <laughs> well, it works. Get the fuck out. <laughs> buddy, buddy. <laughs> Tall. Okay. <laughs> Fuck out of here. There is like an entire wall of heads right there. Oh. Nice. Let's go. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Girl, don't get don't get yourself killed. That's all. Shit. Oh. Kananyan. This is gonna end with us having to run. <laughs> All right, we got what we needed. Not planning on it. Bye. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you.
Hey, a bunch of friends. Mm-hmm. Welcome to life. Cool. That's for you to decide. It's also normal to not really understand when you're like 14. Hmm. Got to come up with a plan, fam. Okay. Sweet. Against each other? Or against the girls? Hey! Yeah, but it's been like a whole however many months it's been since then. And also they sucked. Yeah, they suck a little bit less now. Just a little bit. He's on the way, yeah. Say yes, say yes, say yes. Sculpture classroom, eh? Hi, Mitsue. What's up? He's an art teacher, right? Ooh. She's going outside of herself to get feedback. Oh. Hey. Oh. Self-taught. Didn't think so. Mom says, stupid to draw things. We finally have some insight on Mitsue. That's a bullshit set of expectations. Yep. Yep. That's your soul. No. N no. Yeah. Do that. Fuck your mom. Fuck yes. You're already well on your way. That's how it factors. Ooh. Hey. 
Hey, if that's stupid, ain't no no point in being smart. Yep. Absolutely. Holy shit. And we finally get it. <laughs> Making dinner. Ho 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 ho. Oh. Empathy. It does. Maybe. <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. All right, how much is left? Is there enough for pain? Uh, it depends. There might be. There might be. It's like a minute and 15 left and we started the ED late. Maybe. We'll see. Yep. Oh no. Ah. That has nothing to do with it. Shit, fuck, shit, god damn it. Fuck! God fucking damn it, shit, damn. Okay. This was a really cool episode and and had some some unexpectedly wonderful things in it. Also another mostly pretty like pretty positive episode minus that little bit at the end there. Oh boy. And uh the little bit showing us a little bit of 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 shit, I can't remember his name for the life of me. Tsukinose. That's why I wrote it down. Uh of Tsukinose's parental situation. So again, we are kind of continuing along the line of figuring out little bits and pieces of the home struggle of all of these characters. Uh, I think I think there are really two major things in this episode, and we'll we'll talk about Tsukinose's parents first. The whole helicopter parent idea. No sign of a father doesn't really matter. Um, we've got a a very controlling mother who clearly wants the best for her child and clearly believes that she knows what that is. This is a really common situation, especially when it comes to like you need to study, you need to to get a job, blah 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 blah. And I think that that it's something that a lot of people can relate to. I've, I mean, I've, I've experienced like elements of it in my own home life, but not to a massive extent. So I think that something that, that Maki said in this episode is important is just what he said about empathy, which is that it's really difficult if you can't understand the pain of somebody else to try to relate to them, but you can still imagine that pain. And different people are 
at different levels of being able to do that, to imagine the pain of others when it's not something they themselves have experienced. In the case of Tsukinose with his, with his mother, I can definitely imagine that pain and fill in the blanks with some of my own experience. It is rough. It is not fun to have somebody who genuinely has power over you uh, control every element of your life. That sucks. And there's very little ground to be made up in terms of like convincing that person that the things that you want to do are worthwhile. I'd say that that's probably a bit of a running theme in this episode um, between between him, between Mitsue, and of course with uh, with you once Yuta. Uh, identity, desire to be or do something, and a lack of understanding from the parental units. It's also, I mean, it's a running theme straight through the the entire show and has been since we've really heard Mitsue talk about anything about herself, her whole mentality. Actually, somebody in the comments, I'm going to go find it because I think it's, I think it's worth bringing up. Um, this might, might take a moment, so. There, there was a specific comment, I think it was on the last episode of Hoshii. And I, I want to have it on hand because I think that the person in it hit the nail on the head and uh, made a really good comment. There we go. It was by Tina Vautor on, yeah, on the last episode, on, on episode seven. And uh, it was, with Mitsue are her attitude and her attitude toward hard work, I think you are forgetting that she is an artist. She may think that no matter how hard she tries or how talented she might be, that her art is not good and will never be good enough. My, my daughter is a talented artist and feels that way all the time, under-evaluating under her art. I think that that is a perfect hitting the nail on the head, and since it came in last week, I have to give credit where credit is due for recognizing the situation. Um... Because I think, I think, Tina, I think you nailed it. Uh, that is exactly the situation going on. And honestly, seems to have it much worse than your daughter does. Because your daughter at least has a parent who is supportive and values their work. And still undervalues their own work. Mitsue is in a situation where her mother does not value her work. Where she is berated for it and told that it is stupid. And I think that's a pretty common situation for people who are artists. And I don't think that there's much of a solution for, for that except to, well, either you give in to that and you cut off a, a portion of your own soul, because that's, that's what it is, the impulse to draw, to create, to, to it's a part of your life force, man. It's, it's a part of who you are, and you have to follow it, or you are going to be miserable uh, forever. And I mean... Misery is a part of the human condition, but if you have something that you can do, that you want to do, that brings you joy to draw, to create out of your own mind, to sculpt, to paint, whatever it is, to write, to, to whatever it is, if you have something that helps ease the burden of the human condition that you're worth willing to suffer for, that you think is worth suffering for, then you cannot cut that off from yourself. Obviously, you have to be realistic to some extent, and like sometimes your art is not going to be something that can carry you through your life, that can can make you a living. That's just the nature of this world, but it isn't something you should stop yourself from doing because it's a waste of time. That That time comes back in your own mental health in spades. The sentiment that she had about uh, wanting to get better, wanting to make the, her her thoughts her dreams come to life on the page to to bring them into reality is so relatable i i don't know if i talked about it in hoshii but um i've been scribbling and scratching for a while now and trying to learn more formally how to draw for the exact same reason because there are things that i want to express that are not expressible through words that have to be expressed through visual media and i want to be able to bring them to life and it is relating to anime and manga and art and and artistry that makes me have that urge and so i i 
desperately empathize with Mitsue, and I'm nowhere near as talented as she is portrayed to be in this show. It's clear from from what we've seen of what she's put up online and just the sketches that she showed had a, a fluidity of form and motion and like a, a, a capturing of of lines of motion that shows an innate talent for for seeing and understanding given how little formal training she has in universe right so for her and for anyone with artistic dreams all i can say is you know be be realistic about it but don't cut it off without trying and without the world proving to you that it won't work because your biggest enemy will always be yourself your harshest critic will always be yourself and it is altogether likely that if you put your your time into it and maybe not all of your time maybe you have a day job or you do something else um, but if you put some time into it and put it out into the world for criticism and accept genuine feedback and it might be terrible it might be crushing but if you do that, there is a pretty surprising chance that people will appreciate the works that come out of your soul because everything that I've seen, every piece of art that I have seen on Twitter or posted on Pixiv or on DeviantArt or anywhere that comes from the heart and, and has the work put into it is appreciated by the world. And I think that the value of art is not something that can be that can be easily quantified and the value of art to the artist who creates it is priceless so anyway i i just wanted to say that because it sparked sparked my memory that there was this comment on the last episode and it just it just fits too well so i wanted to to mention it and and talk about it a little bit so helicopter parent Mitsue, big chunk of this episode is a conversation between Yuta, or let's call him Yu, and and Maki. And I think this is surprising um, to have to have such a such an interesting deep dive into what is becoming a more serious issue in in social places everywhere. Um, Transgender issues are a difficult topic and one that that almost immediately brings a lot of a lot of criticism and hate to a piece of media. Um, and also also a lot of support and and love. It is a difficult topic. It is one that I've talked about a couple of times on this channel, and it's always controversial and difficult to talk about. I will say before I say anything about it that I am not trans. I am straight. I was born a guy and I I I identify as a guy and I'm into girls. I am a white cisgender male who is straight. Like I have no way to understand the suffering of trans issues except for my own imagination and that's it. So I don't speak to this from a place of, of like being able to relate to it. I can relate in the same way that Maki does. And I think that having a character like Maki here say what he says is important because it says two things one what he actually says which is everybody sometimes feels uncomfortable with themselves with their their existence and two that you don't necessarily have to experience this particularly difficult form of not fitting in literally not fitting in with yourself not not being who your body says that you would be and the people around you think that you are. Um, you don't necessarily have to experience that to empathize with it and at least not be a fucking asshole about it. Like whatever, whatever you think about being trans or being gay or LGBTQ plus many other things that can get added onto that, whatever you think about that, you don't have to be a dick about it and you can understand that people suffer. Because we all fucking suffer. It's just a very specific, very difficult form of suffering that people and and kids, Yuta here is a kid, is a, a, a young teenager going through a lot of turmoil on a lot of fronts would experience. 
there are a couple of things about this whole sequence that I think are are fantastically well done, and I've been leaning on this word too frequently, but I think it's the perfect word for the situation. I think this was a very deft portrayal, not only of the struggle of somebody realizing that they might be trans, and and trying to come out about that to somebody who they trust, but also a a like textbook that should be studied as far as how to respond to that situation understanding and like not trying to 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 take over the conversation and say like oh i got my problems too just to empathize with them and support them and that's exactly what's shown here by maki something else that's really interesting and i think is is a really smart thing that was done is that we have met the character that Maki has met. We met Sho as a, a guy and was introduced as a guy, hanging out with his mom, seeming like a cool dude, clearly talking to her about, uh, uh, Sho, uh, about Maki's actual father, and clearly being there and being a, a helpful member of the community and really a member of the family. The fact that we met him beforehand and then are told what we would have never known before, that he is a trans person. I think that's pretty cool. I think that that already instills in us a little bit of respect for this character and a little bit of, oh, that doesn't make you weird. In fact, it could be weirder if you don't go along with it. I just can't relate to how that must feel, but there are times when I don't, I don't know the meaning of life either. The world always wants a decision, maybe, and the world can be harsh, absolutely. You don't always have to make that decision, and you certainly don't have to make it immediately. It's something that you can ponder, that you can think about and consider. This was a really cool interaction between these two characters. And for, for Maki to go ahead and, and ponder this himself, is it... It, does it really matter? Does it even... Is it even important? I don't know. And then they dress up, and it's kind of cool. It's a little bit affirming for them, I think. Well, at least for, for you, <laughs> especially when, when this guy, a friend of Toma's, comes over and is like, these girls are really cute. Can I, like, can you, like, hook me up here? That's probably pretty cool for somebody who's considering whether they might want to transition to already be, like, passing. That's probably pretty neat. And Mitsue steps up and, and does the distraction, puts herself in the line of fire for her friends, gets her, her dope white uh, converse totally, totally scuffed up and kind of ruined. It's pretty cool. This is a pretty cool episode. And then we move into a challenge match, and Mitsue goes and finally talks to somebody about what she wants. And he happens to be an art teacher. A little detail about him that I had almost forgotten, honestly. What, what flashed up when, uh, when she was looking through... Oh... Oh, Lurker, your life is worthless. Realize it already. Wow. Look at me wasting tuition. Just die. Didn't you know there's only hate in the world, moron? My mommy and daddy are fighting. Wow. There are some fucking assholes on the internet. This is true. <laughs> there are plenty of fucking assholes on the internet. If you want evidence, just go to the bit shoot comments on any of my videos. Most of them don't have comments on BitChute, but the ones that do, they're not fun. They're not great. Hmm. I don't care. <laughs> Is it stupid? Is it stupid to follow a path 
to pursue something that society doesn't have easy roads to integrate into making a living or being successful. No. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. In fact, I, I would say that society thrives off of it. As, as much as, in general, society's... How do I put this? Societies like to appear on the outside like conformity is valued. But in reality, the, the, the thing that's valued more than anything is the opposite, is the different, the weird, the new. Societies function like, like organisms, big, multifaceted organisms, and every individual amongst them is, is a cell. And sometimes, sometimes being different is like a mutation, and sometimes it's not a good idea for that cell, and sometimes it will lead to that cell dying. Sometimes those mutations are like, well, let's say like Maki's father, people who are fucking useless. And sometimes those mutations are incredibly valuable. They're what keeps things moving on. They're what causes and creates and, and allows for change. Society thrives on the differences between individuals. Without it, there's no trade. There's no value to anything. As, as much as we like to think that societies and countries and cultures thrive off of the, the honeybee workers... They don't. Those make up a foundation, certainly, and they're important, certainly, but it's the, 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 the members on the edges who push the whole beast forward. It's the people who are exploring and trying new things and inspiring that matter most, I think. And maybe I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. I'm just one cell in a gigantic organism. And the organism is becoming universal now. With, with the internet and with communication, we can share thoughts like that. We have a new nervous system that's just being born and spreading its tendrils out through the existent beast, the existent creature that is humanity. And it's all becoming unified. And it is difficult. <laughs> it is a painful process. But all that means is that those people who were on the fringes, who wouldn't have been able to get their ideas, their powerful, important ideas, whether those ideas are words or, or drawings or animations, those people are able to, to send those home and spread them to every other cell in the body and inspire them and give them life. That's the coolest thing in the world. Be one of those people. <laughs> be one of those people. Aspire to be one of those people. Don't, be, don't try to be different for the sake of being different, but man, em embrace the differences you have because they are far more valuable than trying to be the same, than trying to be normal. Normal doesn't do anything for anyone else. <clears> hmm. <throat> this was a cool episode. This ending sequence definitely takes a bit of the wind out of it by adding a bit of scary, a bit of horrifying. I did everything right. Sure you did. It doesn't matter. It, it's, it's not like that. It's not like that. I think this was a well-structured episode with a, a really deft portrayal of one fictional character's struggle with, with his own identity and gender. And I think that's really cool. I like this a lot. I hope that, that things go okay for him at home. I really do. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for me. This was this was an interesting up and down roller coaster of an episode of Hoshi Ainosora. 
I've been Tia Boo. This has been Hoshi Ainosora, episode 8. I hope you've enjoyed it as much or more than I have. If you have your own stories to share about relating to any of the things in this episode, I encourage you to use the comment section as a place to do that. Um, I generally don't delete comments, but uh, if there's significant hatefulness in these comments, I might delete those. Um, generally, I, I try to let the comment section self-moderate and... Uh, Usually people who bring hate into it get what's coming to them, I think. But um, feel free to, to use it for your own purposes, to, to express anything that you want to express. I'll, I'll be reading them. I always read them. And uh, I, I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, or, or more. Maybe, maybe you relate to it on a, on a stronger and deeper level than just being able to imagine some of the suffering these characters are going through. And if you do, I, again, I encourage you to share that if you want to. It might help somebody else. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. I'll see you next week. Peace.